Three swan swister, swisters. Swan swiss, swisters. Oh my god. <laughs> It's Jay and I am finally here with my top 10 of 2018. I was going to do my top 18 of 2018, but I realized, you know, that's a lot of books and your girl loves to ramble. So I'm only doing my top 10, but if you guys want me to make like an honorable mentions of the other eight that I was going to include in this little video, let me know down below and then I'll make that video as well. But without further ado, here are my top 10. Coming in at number 10 is Graceling by Kristen Kishore and I freaking love this book. The audiobook version that I listened to was a full cast recording so I think that that definitely made my experience a lot different than if I had just read the book physically. I personally thought that it was amazing. So the book follows Katza who is graced with killing which is a skill that she really wishes she didn't have. Her uncle the King Rhonda uses her as a pawn to basically put fear into those who he rules. Katza has always despised her uncle for the power that he has over her and so with the help of a couple of guards she forms a council to fight against her uncle. And then one night on a mission to rescue a prisoner she meets Prince Poe and everything changes. I just think this is one of those super underrated books. I thought that the writing style was so simple but it like grabbed your attention right from the beginning and you were hooked on the story. I was so invested in every single one of these characters. There's also slow burn romance as well as my favorite trope which is haters to lovers so I was so here for this book and I highly recommend y'all check it out if you haven't already. Coming in at number nine I have Screams You Hear by James Morris. I have never seen anybody talk about this book on booktube. I was sent it for review by the author and like I'm so happy that I read it because it is so underrated. The book follows 16 year old Ruthie Stroud who lives on a very remote island called Hemlock Island and she's isolated from the mainland and her whole world ends up turning upside down when her parents get a divorce and her mother starts seeing another man and then one day she washes up ashore on the mainland severely burned the only survivor of a very catastrophic event that happened on Hemlock Island and as the detective on the case is trying to unravel her story and figure out what happened the things that she are saying is not exactly what they seem and it's just so freaking good. I would classify it as a horror YA novel. It's definitely not scary but a couple of the things that happen in the book kind of make you go like what the fuck did I just read? The book is told in both the past during the events of what happened on that day on the island but then it's also told in the present when Ruthie is in the hospital and she's like talking to the detective. I just think that it was really unique and really well done. I think it would make an incredible movie as well so producers get on that but seriously definitely definitely underrated. Definitely check out the book if you get the chance. Coming in at number eight is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. I actually have a full review of this one that you guys can check out. Actually, I'm pretty sure the next couple I have reviews for, so I'll leave all of them down below in the description box if you guys are interested in my full thoughts because I'm not telling you my full thoughts, but they're there's a lot of them. So this book follows En Salta who enters the city of scenes when her mother goes missing and she decides that she's going to go track her down. Upon arriving at New Renz, she meets a boy named Levi who is a street lord who also doubles as a con man. He agrees to help En find her mother in exchange for 10,000 volts which is enough to pay off a very risky investment he entered with a prima donna of a very wealthy casino family. But then En discovers discovers a couple of secrets that her mother has been hiding from her and Levi's enemies catch up with him. They receive an invitation to the shadow game which is a game that nobody comes out of alive and it's basically that story but it is so freaking entertaining and addictive and I just love the characters. I also just really liked the magic system and the idea of talents in this book. It also had a slow burn romance as well as again my favorite trope which is haters to lovers so I was definitely here for it. I loved it so much. Highly recommend. If you want my full thoughts then go check out the review. Also I'm just super excited about King of Fools the sequel coming out 
really really soon I just like need it in my life okay okay coming in at number seven is The Last Name Sara by Kristen Cicerelli and Dragons that's all I really need to say about this book this is another one where I have the full review if you want to check it out there's like a bookmark in there because I'm forcing my mother to read it right now because I'm obsessed and I need to be able to you know gush about my feelings with somebody. This book follows Asha, who is the Iskari, who is the bringer of death. Eight years ago, she was corrupted when she spoke the forbidden story to an old dragon named Kozu, who ended up destroying her city. Asha has made it her mission to kill all the dragons of the land and bring their heads to her father, the Dragon King. In a few days, she is to be wed to Jarek, who is the cruel commandant of her father's army, but in order to stop the wedding, she pairs up with her cousin as well as Jarek's slave in order to kill Kozu and end the forbidden stories forever. I definitely did not expect to like this as much as I did. I'm not really a huge fantasy reader. I'm more of a like stabby stabby murder murder contemporary on the side kind of reader but definitely changed my outlook on the fantasy genre. I definitely am going to be picking up more fantasy in 2019. Hopefully I like them as much as I like this one because like hecka good. Also, Asha, badass female character if you guys are into that. Also, haters to lovers trope. Obviously, your girl loves her that trope because like four out of the five books I've talked about has included that so far. So we have a theme here for this video. I also just really like dragons, so I was here for this book. I recently got a copy of The Caged Queen, which is like the companion novel to this, so I'm super excited about that for 2019. Gonna be reading that. Maybe it'll be on a 2019's favorite video. We'll see. Coming in at number six is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, and I have another full review of this one if you guys want to check that out. This follows three sisters who two centuries ago were drowned because they were accused of being witches. Each year, the three swan sisters return to the harbor and take the bodies of three females and basically lure boys into the harbor and drown them. The book follows 17 year old Penny Talbot who is a resident of the island and she's come to the realization that nothing can stop these sisters, they're going to come no matter what. This year a boy named Bo shows up on the island looking for work. So Penny decides that she is going to hire Bo in order to help work on her family's lighthouse but she quickly realizes that she needs to protect Bo from the Swan sisters before it's too late. I initially read this book because it was marketed as a mix between Hocus Pocus and Practical Magic, which are like my two favorite Halloween-y movies. So I was super excited when I received a copy of this and I loved it so much. It's just such an atmospheric novel and it just, the way that it reads is so addictive and you need to know what happens next. I was able to call the ending and like the big reveal, but I still loved it so much and like can we talk about how gorgeous this cover is as well? Coming in at number five is Lying in Wait by Liz Nugnet and I freaking loved this book. It's a stabby stabby murder murder book obviously. The book follows Lydia who has what seems to be the perfect life. She has a ginormous house, a loving husband who is a judge so he's very influential and then she also has a son who she adores. But then her son Lawrence discovers a secret that she and her husband have been hiding ever since they met Annie Doyle and everything changes. From the very first line, I was hooked on this book. I definitely did not think that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. The tagline was what like hooked me into reading the book in the first place. It's, my husband did not mean to kill Annie Doyle, but the lying tramp deserved it. And if that doesn't catch your attention, are you okay? Actually, you probably are because like that's a bit fucked up, but I was here for it. The story is told in like alternating perspectives between three people, Lawrence, the son, Lydia, the mom, and Karen, who is Annie Doyle's sister, and it's just so well done. Like the reveals, the pacing, like everything is just so perfect. Definitely would make another sick movie, so producers, again, get on that. 
but if you guys have not picked up this book I definitely suggest it especially if you're a thriller fan. Coming in at number four is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. I'm not going to give a synopsis since it is like the second book in a series to the Diviners trilogy which I have not read the third book but I definitely should soon. I need to go like find a copy but oh my god guys this book rarely do I like the second book in a series more but this definitely took the cake over the Diviners in my opinion. I listened to this on audiobook so again that might have changed my perspective of the series but it is just so atmospheric and creepy and you're just sucked right back into the world of the diviners and it's just so entertaining and addictive highly 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 recommend it on audio 100%. Coming in at number three is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This is another one I have a full review of if you want to check that out but I freaking loved this book. This book follows Nova and the rest of the anarchists who are trying to rebuild their life after their leader Ace Anarchy is destroyed during a battle with the renegades. The rest of the world has very fond thoughts of the renegades and they worship them basically but Nova has very personal reasons for why she wants her revenge on them. With a plan set in motion, Nova decides that she is going to infiltrate the renegades and become one of them in order to destroy them from the inside out but then she meets Adrian who is a renegade and things may change. I had super duper high expectations for this book because the Lunar Chronicles is one of my favorite series. Marissa Meyer is one of my favorite authors. So I was definitely not disappointed by this book. I thought it was so entertaining. I thought that the pacing was so well done. I cared about literally every single character, even like the very minor ones. I was like, protect them at all costs. Oh my god. This was another one of those slow burn romances, haters to lovers type of things. So again, I was here for it. I cannot wait to read Arch Enemies. I'm so excited to see what happens to the renegades and the anarchists and every single character. I just love them so, so much. Coming in at number two is Keep Her Safe by K.A. Tucker. I think this was like the third book that I read this year and I have been raving about it ever since. I love it so much. This is another one. I have a full review if you guys want to check that out. The book follows Noah Marshall who just got told a secret by his mother who has been hiding it for 14 years since she became the chief of police in Austin, Texas. It also follows Gracie Richards whose entire life was turned upside down 14 years ago when her father was murdered in a police investigation where he was labeled a corrupt cop. So when Noah shows up one day on her front porch they both decide that they want to figure out what happened that night to her father and figure out what's going on with the Austin police force. I don't usually read romance suspense novels. I think this may have been my first one but I was instantly hooked on it. I needed to know what was going to happen next. I had so many theories in my head about who was doing what and when and where and just all these theories that were so incredibly wrong. I usually don't like romances because I find that they like overshadow the other aspects of the book, but this one was Slow Burn, which we all know, one of my favorite things. So I definitely think that it was a good inclusion for this story. The book is told in alternating perspectives and I loved both of the characters voices Gracie and Noah I thought that they just complemented each other so well and just the whole story came together so nicely so if you guys are looking for a good romance suspense check out this one because it's heck a good time and then coming in at number one should be no surprise to any of you if you guys have been on this channel since the beginning because this is my favorite author. I love this trilogy with all of my heart. I rave about it all the time. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know this. I literally never shut up about it. But it is Siren by Sophia Elaine Hansen. This is the finale of the vinyl trilogy, which I just adore so so much. I'm not going to give a synopsis for this one but basically Vinyl is a dystopian steampunk novel where music is used as a weapon and it's just so underrated. Like you guys I've been raving about this trilogy and Sophia's writing since I read her books. They are just so incredible and so action-packed and just the characters you can't help but love them so freaking much. Like I want to protect all of these guys with my whole heart. They're just honestly like 
the best group of friends ever like I just love them so much and I could ramble about this book for a million trillion years it was honestly just like the best ending that I could have asked for there was so much pain and heartbreak and like I would be crying I literally cried I don't cry at books guys the fact that this made me cry was like and I'm not making much sense with this but like read the book okay that's all I'm gonna say I think that Sophia is such an underrated writer I think that she deserves so much more recognition than she gets she's writing another book right now called Night Strider so when that comes out you know your girl's gonna be like snatching it up as soon as she can she's also written two different poetry books and I believe she's writing another one right now so guys go check that out but seriously Siren best book of 2018 that I read so all right guys so that was my personal top 10 of 2018 they weren't books that came out necessarily in 2018 they were just the books that I read in 2018 let me know down below if you guys have read any of these also read the vinyl trilogy thank y'all and I will see you all in my next video goodbye